So you gave your players a bunch of gold and now they're completely loaded. You have no ideas about what they can spend it on and you're worried that you're gonna ruin and break the balance of your game. Well, don't worry, because in this video, I'm gonna give you a bunch of ideas for things that your players might be able to spend their money on. Things that'll actually help make your game better and more enjoyable so that you don't regret giving your players and having your players loaded up with all that gold. Before I dive into all that one big warning, don't just take the gold away. Don't have a dragon come and burn the gold down. Don't have the gold mysteriously disappear. You're gonna be robbing your players of what they feel like they've fairly earned, and to be honest, I kind of agree. If your players ended up with too much gold, either you made a mistake as a DM, or they just outwitted you and did something really clever. You should reward them for that. You shouldn't be punishing them. You shouldn't be retroactively using your DM powers to make the gold disappear. Instead, recognize it as an opportunity to lead to some really interesting aspects of the game that you wouldn't otherwise get to touch on. Things that adventurers don't typically get to do because they're not always strapped with cash. There are two kinds of solutions or two kinds of avenues that you can take when your players have so much money. The first is kind of a spending solution. Things that your players can actually spend their money on, things that allow them to affect the world. The second has more to do with how the world changes around them. When your players now have all this cash, they might start to be treated differently. And they'll find that NPCs, organizations, or the world around them will change in unexpected ways. Before we get to that, let's start with things your players can spend their gold on. The first thing is having your players buy or invest in land. Have them set up a stronghold or invest in a local settlement that they've spent a lot of time in. Allow them to use the gold to finance and fortify the place that will eventually become their home base or even just a place that could be one of their home bases, a sort of central camp that they spend a lot of time in. They could build a keep or set up a temple to a god or pantheon that they have a lot of allegiance to. Maybe they even invest the money with a local merchant or noble who's proven trustworthy to help make the town more secure. People love player bases. Setting up a stronghold, equipping it with guards and proper defenses, having staff is a great money sink that your players will love and a fantastic narrative opportunity. Not only can that place eventually come under siege, but it'll also give your players a fantastic sense of ownership and belonging in the world. They're not only adventuring through it, they're now actually a part of it. Another way that your players can invest their money is in starting a business or organization. You can find rules for starting a business in the player's handbook or the DM's guide. And with starting a business, it costs a lot of money up front. There might be a lot of startup costs to actually getting the business off the ground. Sure, in the long term, it'll allow them to make that money back and they'll be making more money than they did before, but you'll essentially be leveling out the effects of the massive hoard of loot that they've acquired, and by the time that they're making that money, they'll likely be at a higher level, and so it won't matter too much that they have such a large sum of gold, and they'll be able to continue to reinvest to perhaps grow the business further, perhaps setting up even other branches in different cities. Starting an organization is very similar. There are likely guilds or similar factions in your world, but why not give your players a chance to set one up of their own? The rules here are largely undefined, and there are plenty of great homebrew resources you can find online about setting up guilds and player settlements, but ultimately, as the DM, it's up to you. Think about what makes sense for your players to do and perhaps scale it to the money that they've earned. Allow it to have a final tangible effect where the status that they now receive as a sort of guild leader opens up new opportunities and avenues for them throughout the game. And status is a pretty big part of fantasy worlds. It might not be a core part of your fantasy adventure with your players playing rough adventurers that go traipsing into dungeons or boots and knees covered in mud, but with enough gold, they can buy that status. Perhaps there are noble titles that they can actually purchase or factions that they can win the favor of, making allies that allow them to reach a higher echelon of society they never reached before. This could open the door to a more political adventure or side quest in your campaign and allow your players to start to see the wider scale of things going on in your world. Of course, there are always magic items. Magic items in the book tend to be relatively cheap compared to the size of some hordes players can amass, but you can easily fix this by making magic items either a little bit more expensive or more rare, or doing something creative like allowing your players to commission custom magic items that they desire. I think this is a great way to allow your players to really feel rewarded for the money that they've earned. Not only can they go and spend it 
on things that they find naturally in the world, but they can use it to actually create things that they personally specifically want for their own characters. When it comes to magic items, you obviously don't want to overdo it because they can easily get out of hand and can throw your game even further out of balance, but maybe I'll do another video on that at a different time. Hirelings are another great way that your players can spend their money. If they're already setting up a faction or a guild or just otherwise becoming a deeper part of the world, they're probably getting to see a larger scale view of what's going on in your campaign. With hirelings, you can do something really interesting, showing your players that there are different missions to be completed, and perhaps they don't all need your group's attention. By setting up all these different missions that don't all necessarily necessarily require your players specific attention, your players can spend their gold on sending mercenaries and hirelings out to complete those missions on their behalf. Perhaps through the successful completion of these missions, your players receive reports from different parts of the world or kingdom, filling them in on more of what's been going on around them while they're off on their own adventures. Or perhaps one of those missions fails and they receive a distress message asking for immediate support, immediate help from a group that seems to be not too far from where your party is now. I think this is a really cool and interesting campaign hook to set up some really fun NPC interactions for your party and a new way into an adventure that you might already have planned. It can take your players by surprise, especially if they're just expecting those missions to resolve peacefully and easily. Of course, there are plenty of other assets too that you can allow your players to invest in, like their own boat if naval travel or travel just across the sea in general is an important part of your campaign. Maybe they want their own wagons, vehicles, stables for their own horses, or maybe they want information. Information can be a very, very costly asset. Think about the things that money can buy in general. Think about the things that your players need and find creative ways to make those available through the loot that your player has acquired. Gold itself is not an ends, but a means to the other ends of the goals your players have. Finally, downtime is always an option. Give your players a time skip whether it's three months or a couple years. During that time, your players can train a skill or proficiency or engage in larger narrative tasks, like setting themselves up in a new area or growing that guild or business that they've tried to establish. Maybe they're on their prowl looking for information and you deem that this is something that might take a few months. During that time, it's natural that they'll be spending money. There are costs associated with things like learning languages, learning skills, and other proficiencies, as well as just simple lifestyle expenses. A time skip like this is a great opportunity for your players to spend their resources. Adventures are usually so concentrated and take place over such a short period of time that longer periods like this will give your players room for broader and wider character development and progress. It'll allow them to take their character arcs further and also invest in those kinds of things that they wanted to do, like training a different tool proficiency or skill proficiency or learn another language, like I mentioned. Maybe during that time they want to rise up the ranks of a faction that they're actually a part of. It would be weird for this to happen over the course of just a few weeks or a couple months, but if your time skip is a year or longer, that's more than reasonable for your players to essentially earn the time that they're spending with that faction and have the progress that they make in that time make more sense. All right, so that's the list of things your players might be able to spend money on. Now, here's a few ways the world might bite back. The most important thing to remember here is that fame and fortune aren't all just positive things. They can attract a lot of attention, and that attention isn't always of the positive variety. When your characters have an unexpected windfall, it's a perfect opportunity to bring in past enemies who might have gone to ground or escaped your party's clutches. And now, seeing your players with that accumulated fortune, feel that the time is ripe to target them again and try to steal that money from them. Villains always need more money to achieve their own nefarious ends. Or if it's not a pre-existing villain in your campaign, perhaps introduce a new one. If your players haven't been too careful in keeping a low profile when they've been making all this money, perhaps they're targeted by thieves. Thieves might be drawn to them by the simple allure of all that gold or platinum that they carry, or perhaps there are specific magical items they've acquired or purchased with that money that the thieves are after. Thieves can be insidious. They can be posing as merchants selling fake 
magical items and cheat your players out of their money. Or they can be cults that are after specific artifacts needed for a dangerous ritual. They can even be good. They can be a person who had an item stolen from them that was wrongfully resold to your party, and now that person who is of a just cause is tracking your party down, trying to get their heirloom item that is rightfully theirs back from your players. Are your players going to do the right thing, or will they try to keep the weapon that they have acquired even if it's not rightfully theirs? Finally, in the same way that factions and guilds and businesses can provide positive boons and bonuses and allow your players to access new areas, new story hooks, meet interesting NPCs, they can also have some consequences. The biggest one is taxes. If your group contains a paladin or cleric that's been using their divine blessing or their connection to their deity to allow them to successfully accomplish these adventures, perhaps the church will send a few priests to kindfully request a tithe to the church so that the church might continue to expand or increase its membership. And if your player declines, well, what does that mean for their alignment? What does that mean for their standing with the church? If they don't decline, then all the better for them and they would gain reputation and have that positive side effect. But it's a difficult thing for your players to spark to part with their money, but at least this is a story motivated way for you to provide them with some interesting conflict that, depending on your players, could go either way. And you know that whichever way it does go, it'll take your players' characters on a really interesting narrative journey. Guild taxes would work much the same way if you have a player playing a character who's either some sort of artisan or a merchant or part of some other organization. There might be membership fees or taxes or some other request for money that could either uh, boost the player's status in that organization or negatively impact their character. Whatever you do, keep it story motivated. Always be looking for opportunities to make your story more interesting and more compelling. And if your players have a ton of gold, think about not what you can do to just get rid of the gold, but how you can use that gold they've acquired and how you can present your players with opportunities to use that gold that they've acquired to unlock interesting new directions for the party different adventures that they can go on, different kinds of challenges they may not have encountered before. In combat-heavy campaigns, especially, this kind of social and political intrigue can be really interesting and challenging for your players in a way they never have expected, and it can get them to engage with your world and your campaign in an all new style. All right, thanks for watching. I hope this video has helped and given you some cool ideas. I'm Jeremy Malul. This has been Experience Game. This is the series where I make videos about how you can get the most out of your Dungeons and Dragons games, whether you're a player or a dungeon master. I make a new video about either D&D or art and writing every Friday. So if you like what you saw, please subscribe. And I guess I'll see you next week.